It's lovely to be with you. My name is Brian Murphy and I come from Bambridge. I was originally born in a small village called Ballygown. That's where I grew up and then I got married to a Bambridge lady called Diane, so I moved. So it's really, really good to be with you. I'm 62 now and it doesn't get any easier to give your testimony. I'm as nervous as get out. There's a verse in John 10, 27 and it says this, My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Now, I was brought up in a good Christian home. My mum and dad were saved, and I knew the gospel. I was taken to Sunday school and church, but to be honest, I used to believe that a lot of it was just emotion, and a lot of preachers maybe hyped up a meeting to try and get people to be converted. So whenever I sat in meetings, I quite honestly resisted. And my attitude was, well, you're not gonna push me into making a decision that I don't wanna make. And that would have been my attitude in a lot of meetings. And if I went to a really, what I would call a hot gospel meeting, I just sat and resisted. But I discovered later on that God can speak. So I'm gonna move on. I was 27, I was working in Hartonwood Shipyard and I was offered redundancy and I had an opportunity to go out to Australia to live and I was intending to go there for uh, full time. So I got my redundancy. Now I would have described myself as a sinner because I drank and I cursed and different things, but I was a sinner with a self-righteous streak in me. Because whenever I got my redundancy, I got 6,000 quid and I tithed th that redundancy because an old man in the shipyard, a welder told me, he said, if you ever tithe your money, he says, you'll never be in want. And for some reason that stuck with me. I wasn't a Christian, but it stuck. So I would have described myself as a self-righteous sinner or a sinner with a, a self-righteous streak in him. And that was me. So I went to Australia. I was intending to live there. I got a good job in the Ministry of Defence. But after a year and a half, I came home. Couldn't settle. And I got a job then in a food factory called Pritchett Foods in Newton Ards. And for the first time in my life, I was miserable in work. They were talking earlier about people having a smile. I went into work for three months, literally with a face like a lurgan spade. I absolutely detested that job. And I was trapped because I had a mortgage at this time. I was living on my own, and I just couldn't walk away from it. And there was one morning I went into the factory, and it was after this three-month period, and there was a lot of commotion. And there was police around, and I knew something was wrong. And whenever I, I went in, I discovered early in the morning, two men had walked into this big spray dryer. It's like a big milk silo. They were scraping the outside of the silo and they were standing on this platform. And the platform collapsed and both men fell to the ground. One man was killed and the other man, he was in hospital. So my job that day was basically to go through all the maintenance records to find out when was work done on that platform? And that was a really tough time for me because I was wondering, is there something that I didn't sign off properly or whatever? So that whole day for me was misery, but I found nothing. Now that night, this is how God works. It's all, it appears by chance, but God's sovereign. That night I was invited to go to a gospel mission. It was in Cumber, my cousin, uh, a guy called Munts, run a wee wooden hall mission. And he invited an old preacher, you might have heard of him, called Noel Grant, to take a mission. And that night, I was invited to go to the mission. And I thought nothing of it. I put on my suit, and away I went to the mission. And when I walked in, it was as rough as anything. It was a wee rough hall that super shares going. And Noel Grant at that time was quite an old preacher. And I kind of looked around. I'd been in different churches, like, this is a beautiful church you have. And I thought, this wee mission, this thing's got no hope. And I kind of laughed at it, I have to be honest. But there was something about that old preacher that I liked. He was very sincere, and I really did like him. And the sung we courses and things, and you shook hands with people, and there was something nice about it. And it took my mind off everything that had happened that day. And basically, at the end of the meeting, on the way out, he gave me this wee book called Let Him In. And he says, Bran, would you read that book? And I says, oh, well, so I read the book. It didn't mean anything to me, and I went back a week later. But this was a different meeting. And at the end of the meeting, the, the preacher got people to stand up. And it was like an appeal. 
And I can remember sitting in that meeting thinking, if this old boy thinks he's going to embarrass me into becoming a Christian, he's got no chance. So I just stood, I just sat firm. I didn't care how many people stood up. I just sat firm and that was me. So on the way out the door, he wanted to talk to me. He says, look, we a wee room there. He says, I'll go in and have a chat with you. We're going to talk about the Lord. I says, no, I'm not interested. And I was kind of put off because I really don't like being buttonholed. And the next day I went into work and I said to myself, that's me done with that match and I'm not going back to that thing again. But I came under conviction of sin in work. And the only way I can describe it, I've never experienced it before or since, but a real disturbance come over me. And for the first half of the day, I couldn't work or think or anything because of this terrible disturbance that was on me. And I decided I'm going to go home at lunchtime, get my lunch, and I'm going to get hold of a Bible because maybe after being in that mission, maybe this is God. So I went home and I hooked out a wee Bible. My mum had given it me before I went to Australia. And I hooked the wee Bible out and I just opened it up and it fell open at Ezekiel, but something told me, read from the New Testament. So I opened it up again and it fell open and I just looked down and I read a verse. And the verse was John chapter 3, verse 7. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. Now, I can be stupid at times, but I'm not that stupid to know that that was God speaking. Out of all the verses in the Bible, I knew exactly what that meant. And I couldn't deny that God had really, really spoken to me. So for the next three days, you see, if you're going to get saved, you have to turn from your sin. This man that run this wee mission, a year before I went to Australia, he spoke to me about the Lord. And he made a bit of an impression, and I went out for a run after it. And I just started to think about becoming a Christian, reading the Bible. But then I thought, hold on a minute, Brian. And this is the devil's voice. He says, you're going out to Australia. You're going to have a good time. You can sin as much as you like. And that's exactly what I did. So whenever God had really convicted me and spoken to me, I knew that my sin had to go. So for three days, I really battled. But I decided this could be the very last time that the Lord could speak to me. He spoke to me so clearly, I couldn't deny it. So I said, right, I'm going to go to the last night of this mission. This mission had been extended from a three-week mission to a four-week. And I went on a Sunday night. And the wee hall was packed, and I was stuck right up at the front. And I didn't even listen to the preacher because I'd already decided I'm going to get right with God here. And Noel Grant was a very wise man because there was a number of people that stayed for counselling and he took the time that you needed because I was a drinker. I liked drink. And, and I, I was intending, but I'd still go back with my friends. I'd go to the pub, but I'll drink Coke. I'll not drink beer. He told me, he says, no, 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 you can't do that because he says, they'll just pull you back down again. And he was right. So he, after a bit of discussion and warnings and things, I then decided, right, I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer. And Noel had a wee prayer in his book. He had this wee book called Let Him In. He had a wee prayer. And I simply knelt down my knees and him beside me, and he led me in stages in that wee prayer. And in that wee sinner's prayer, I was saved. And I was able to go home and tell my mum. My father actually was in the front row of that wee meeting and I shook hands with him because he knew that I was going to get right by God. And it was a great thing to do because my mother saw me saved and she had prayed for many, many years for me. I've been saved 32 years and the Lord's good. The Christian life's not easy. Anybody that thinks the Christian life's easy, you're a mug. Because at times it's really, really brilliant. There's great blessing in it at times, but at other times it can be difficult. But the Lord's always with you. He'll never leave you, and he'll never forsake you. And the difference that made in my life, it'll be simple as this is, God will give you purpose in your life. I never had any purpose. That's why I went round and drunk and did different things. I never really knew what, what direction to go in, but as soon as I got saved, I got direction and I got purpose. So I recommend the Lord Jesus Christ to you. If you invite him into your life and you're sincere and you get born again, you'll never, ever regret it. So I just want to thank you for listening and it was good to be with you and I'm going to hand back to the Chief Alan Bartley now. Thank you.